Hello, I'm Silent Death, and welcome to the 10th episode of the Comprehensive Ferrum Aerospace Research Tutorial. In this episode, we'll be doing a, another case study. We will be assuming that you have most, if not all, of the aerodynamic technologies unlocked. Specifically, that you have access to a Mark III parts and the Rapier engine. We will also be assuming that you have upgraded your space plane hangar to level 3 and your runway to level 3. First, let's quickly look at how we would modernize our plane that we built last time. We can replace the ram air intakes with a shock cone intakes, the uh, turbojet engines with rapier engines, and the LVT-45 with a, a nuclear engine. This way, we can use these for the initial push outside out of the atmosphere and then I switch to just using the nuclear engine for going into planetary or whatever else we may wish to do now on to what we're going to be doing today it is all well and good to put satellites into orbit but if you have access to rapier engines and a Mark III parts, you have probably moved beyond satellites and are now more interested in lifting large amounts of fuel or stations. For that, we have a heavy lifter here using a Mark III parts. Our cargo is going to be a kind of a standard fuel section, which has a 2.5 meter RCS tank, a, a big orange jumbo tank, SAS, a docking port, a, a probe core, some RCS thrusters, and solar panels. Basically everything you need to get that docked to a station and dump some fuel out. For the tail section, we're going to use this. A couple different ways we could go, but I think I prefer this way. We'll then add on this and a fairly standard tail section here with just slightly larger stabilizers. Now this is 0.4, it has a no fuel. This is set to a negative 200 angle of attack. We may need to adjust that. That's just how I have it set. Then this one is also set to about 0.4. Now then, being we're going to be using rapier engines, we're going to need a source of power as they do not generate power. So we'll just take a couple of these RTGs. Make sure our mirror is on. And just stick those right in there. They fit perfectly fine, and that should more than meet our needs. Close that. And now for the wings. We're going to want the rear of our wing to be all the way back out there. Turn off angle snap. right about to there and this section is actually a two different wings it's a little tiny wing there and a wing there because we have this section if I can place it properly It goes like that, and then we're going to want to 
offset these as high up as they'll go. Or, well, about that high. To get our center of lift high enough. For rail stability, these have a tiny bit of dihedral. And they have one, two, three, four, five, six rapier engines on each wing. I think I'm going to do the intakes differently, maybe. We'll see about that. Let's get rid of the ones that we have. A little bit too overzealous there. We'll also want to add a little bit more fuel, I think. Not uh, too terribly much, but a little bit more. Just based on a previous experience, we're going to take off that one, that one, and I think that one. And that'll give us what? 120, 240 units more of fuel, of it just plain fuel, while also giving us another 3 units of our 0.03 units of air intake. Now let's see if we can do something a little bit better looking with the intakes. I would like you. Come hang out. It's right there. And then we'll put one of these on. And we will mirror that. The other side. Okay, good. That got mirrored. And we'll use these instead of those other ones. So how much is that? One, two, three, yeah. Let's just use you to count. 2.9, 2.4, 2 2.7, 2 so a little bit more. Point nine is probably going to be good because we're not going to have as much thrust as I would actually like to have. But I think that looks better than the other types. It may even be less draggy. Who knows? Auto arrange those and close that. As far as our engine placement goes, engines, gimbals, we have a bit of torque just naturally from the way the engines are, so we're going to want our engines to counteract that torque. Which they can slightly. That's going up. Okay, so that means that our engines are overly counting or counteracting it. Pitch roll, y'all. Pitch up. Pitch down. Oh yeah, they can way over handle that. Alright, let's check the flight characteristics of what we have so far. Four, haha, funny. Um, little bit either draggy or not enough lift. Probably not enough lift at that speed. What about 0.5? Yeah, that's what the problem is. We also have uh, two control surfaces here and another control surface here. This one is pitch. This one is a flap. 
So we can go to negative 28.5, and this is just our standard roll surface. These wings all have a fuel in them, and they're a little bit stronger than normal due to the amount of stuff we have hanging off of them. We will want some canards. There appears to be fine. Our wings, I think, are about three meters outside of our mock cone. That could be a problem for drag. At least at Mach 4, anyway. Let's check our thing. So apparently we don't have enough pitch authority according to that. What if we add it on the flaps? Like we're going to have to pump some fuel forward to handle that. Of course, the engines will be able to overcome that kind of thing. We actually may want to extend these out one more. Let's go ahead and do that. I was hoping we'd have enough room for another engine, but it doesn't look like it. That doesn't really help that much, so we won't do that. Does not help very much at all. Our drag is just a little bit high. I don't really see a good way to do that. Let's check our static thing. <clears throat> okay, so at least we're not going to be having much difficulty holding. What if we were empty? That could indeed be a problem. Let's tweak this down a tiny bit. Okay, let's tweak this one also. Oh, I bet it's because, yeah, we would have to pump some fuel up forward. Because this one's not going to be empty up here. The other ones will be. So that's not entirely accurate. So we need to take care of our fuel, fuel issues. For the starters, you're going to be pumped out first. Then... You will be pumped into... Along with all of you. Okay, these are actually going to be partied over these. Keep our center of mass a little bit further forward. And then the wings. I think I'm just going to let drain naturally. So I want you to be probably level 1, and you to be, I guess, level 2. Then that should pump out into the wings. That might work. Maybe. If we made these wings... Level four. And have them pump out. That might actually even be better. And I've already set up the landing gear. Let's look at action groups. So each engine is in its own action group. Or each pair of engines. With a switch mode option. And we'll just run through the stability derivatives now. 
So we were at 0.5 at zero. Um, that's empty. Some roll instability. Let's turn off those. Sure, we don't have any roll instability actually. Oh wait, that's altitude 0.5 and Mach number zero. No wonder. 0 0.5. There we go. It is saying we don't have enough pitch authority. Seven. Okay, we're going to have to be going fairly quickly to climb at all. Five. Yep. Yeah. This is going to be a pretty slow climb. Our engines are going to have to do most of our pitching for us. Then 10 kilometers. Actually, what we'll do is we're going to change these one more. See if that helps with that issue. Okay, that just messed everything up because the things are going wonky. All right, let's save this and reload it. Okay, apparently we need to be going at Mach 1.5 at 10 kilometers, 15 kilometers. Again, we're probably going to be going to Mach 2 there, yep. Really not good on the drag. At 20 kilometers. A little bit of instability. Or lack of pitch authority, but our fuel pumping will take care of that. So once we get higher, we actually start performing better. 0.5 maybe? Still not great, but 4. 4 should do it. Again, a lack of pitch authority, so this is going to be a little bit difficult to control. But fuel pumping is going to take care of most of it. The engine gimling should take care of the rest. And if that doesn't work, we're going to have some RCS. So we'll use these. Them. Guess right about there. And then we'll have some of these too. And I did not have Maron. Hard to get this place right. Alright, we'll want to toggle off the Verners. Which we have two more up there and another two right here. I guess we, yeah, I guess we don't need any more RCS, because that can push us down. We're going to need uh, some struts for our wings due to the amount of stuff they have hanging on them. Put strut there. Another strut. Um, from here and all the way out and then if we can we'll kind of hide it a little bit we actually do it on both sides maybe maybe we can't 
move that end of the strut. But that's pretty good. Okay. We've already checked our engines. We've got enough intakes. And that's messing up again because we went to the action groups. It always does that. Okay, this doesn't seem to have connected on both sides. Okay, there we go. And now let's go test this thing out. Uh, we forgot a couple things. One is Kerbal Engineer. Though I think we'll probably have an engineer inside of this. How many people can you hold? It doesn't say there. Four. So yeah, we probably have an engineer inside of that. But just to make sure, we're going to put Kerbal Engineer there. And also put one on our thing just for completion's sake. We do not have any air brakes. That would have been a bad thing. Or those under under this. This plane is going to be rather gladly. Not having the air brakes. Make a landing a wee bit difficult. We also apparently don't have any parachutes. Radial chutes. Give me a two of those. Go ahead and set those up. We want the drag chute texture, just because we want a drag chute. Switch the wet mass. We're going to be landing at, say, 200. We want to decelerate at 75. We're going to use two parachutes. And now then, apply those settings. Thank you. Apply them to everybody. Thank you again. We'll also want to make sure these are in the brakes. And then the front landing gear is not, which it does not appear to be. There's a toggle air brake and a toggle air brake. I wish that was automatic, but apparently it's not. And I guess we'll want to close this. And now let's give this a shot. Oh, uh, we need to adjust this. That would not be good either. Oh, uh, screw it. Just go that way. Our thrust to weight is a lot less than we're used to, so getting off the runway is a little bit more difficult than normal. Uh, but we uh, do manage. Of course, we're falling right after we take off, but we build up the speed fast enough. Not sure if we'd be able to pull it off with a very much less thrust to weight. Climbing is extremely slow because, again, of our limited thrust to weight ratio. And our relative high amount of drag. We have to go for a fairly a gentle ascent. And that things get better once we start getting a little bit higher. Though the first few kilometers are difficult. Involving climbing as much as I can to get out of the thicker part of the atmosphere. And then slowing down as we lose lift. I think maybe if I was going to do this again, I would do something with bigger wings and one or two more pairs of engines just to see how well it handled. If it was worth perhaps the extra drag to have the extra lift and the extra engines. I'm thinking it probably would be, but we'd have to try it and see. I'm finally at breaking at 10 kilometers. Though we are losing lift again. Almost up to Mach 1.5. And for some reason our craft wants to roll over to the side. 
think something may have messed up or bugged out there. Because there's nothing showing up on it that should account for any kind of roll imbalance thing. Up to 15 kilometers and starting to climb a lot better now. Once we got out of the thin atmosphere, started picking up speed a lot faster. And of course, as we start going faster, we start reaching our engine's peak performance, which is, I think, 1100 meters per second. Having a little bit of difficulty climbing. Up to about Mach 3 now at 20 kilometers. We've built up enough speed that we're going to try to get a little bit higher again. And popped on the flaps to help a little bit more there too. That should help us climb up until we get to our max speed achievable with these engines. We are now at peak performance, so our engines are going to be dropping off from now. Up to 26 kilometers. And almost Mach 4, Mach 3.7, starting to get in the yellow on our engines. Which means they are a little bit air starved. Having to turn on RCS to help us hold a position at this high altitude. 4.2 kilometers, or four, Mach 4.2 I mean, at 27 kilometers. We are now diving back down to about 25 kilometers before we start our start climbing again. We've switched on two pairs of rapier engines over to the closed cycle mode to give us bring us up to 0.85 thrust to weight, and now we are climbing very rapidly up to 180 meters per second, 190 and trying to hold about like that switch another pair of engines over to rocket mode to keep our intakes good now a fourth pair and a fifth pair and we're up to 43 kilometers and now all of our engines are switched over to rocket mode We have our apoapsis out of the atmosphere, so we're just going to hold a prograde, a surface prograde, until we get up there. We are in orbit, and we still have a 405 meters per second left, which is good enough. Somewhat concerned about how efficient it is at climbing. It took longer than I would like. If I had to do it again, I may try a wider wingspan with the more engines and see if that is worth the increased drag or not. But this works, so let's go ahead and get rid of our cargo. Let's see, this one? Okay, maybe it's still attached. I don't know what went then. Should decouple it manually if it wants to be that way. Still have tons and tons of monoprop, and I probably have used some from this. Well, I can't check now. Should have made sure that that was set up properly so that it sucked the monoprop out of here. Yeah, I most definitely used some of that. But that's just a minor thing that I could fix if it was an issue. Close. And now then, let's see how this thing lands. Without so much weight, it is going to be a very, very glidy. And we're going to want to change... This to be a pop-in thing. Probably drop that down to at least a level one. So they can get lots of fuel. 
Yeah, I think that's going to adjust our center of mass and center of lift positions how we want them. And we'll just burn uh, right around our parapsis. So we could probably burn right now to get to where we want it to be. Retrograde. And then I'll just, you know, fast forward through this. I've set up a waypoint on our runway, which you may have saw when we were taking off. And I did that because that will show us our heading. So we can get perfectly lined up for the runway. We're actually already pretty good. But let's take care of that, and I will be back once I'm coming in for final approach or whatever. Descent, re-entry, and landing is pretty much uneventful. We basically just point to the waypoint of marker we have set up on the runway. That little blue marker that I set up earlier. And glide right in. The aircraft has extremely good glide performance. Given that we have so much wing after we lost our cargo and most of our fuel, we're quite light for the amount of wing we have, so we can glide very, very, very far. And we just pretty much glide right to the runway. Nothing special about it. So that is going to be it for this episode. In the next episode, we will be trying out another fairly specialized craft, a vertical takeoff or landing craft. So like if you like, subscribe if you're not. Leave a comment if you have any questions, and I will do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching, and I will see you uh, next time. Uh.